Mr. President and members of the court, my submissions concern the case of Ms. Liddell. Lillian Liddell was a registrar whose duties included registering and conducting civil marriage ceremonies. She had been employed in that capacity by the London Borough of Islington, a local government authority, since 2002. Some years later, in 2005, new legislation came into force in the United Kingdom under which couples of the same sex were entitled to seek to register civil partnerships, which are for all practical and legal purposes indistinguishable from marriage. Ms. Liddell is a Christian. She has a sincere religious belief that marriage is only properly a relationship which can be concluded between a man and a woman. For that reason, she has a conscientious objection to conducting or registering civil partnerships. And she thus asked Islington, before the new law came into force, not to designate her as a civil partnerships registrar under the new law. Islington refused and insisted that Ms Liddell, together with all of its other registrars, should change the terms of her employment and should be designated as a civil partnerships registrar. She was disciplined for gross misconduct and ultimately forced to resign because of her refusal in these circumstances to act as a registrar of civil partnerships. The issue before this court is whether, in treating her in that way, Islington subjected Ms Liddell to unjustified discrimination on grounds of her religious belief, contrary to Article 14 of the Convention, read together with Article 9. And we stress that this is not a claim brought under Article 9 alone, it is a claim brought under Article 14, a claim of discrimination. The particular facts of this case and the history of the national legal proceedings are, we submit, of crucial importance and we stress the following points. First, as I have said, Ms Liddell had already been employed as a marriage registrar for a number of years before the enactment or coming into force of the Civil Partnerships Act. In that capacity, there was no question of her being required to register same-sex unions. She did not volunteer for a career which involved uh, the registering of civil partnerships. Mr Eady, uh, in his submissions, suggested that these were cases of, employer, of em employees seeking to force their employer to alter their terms and conditions. Not so. This was a case of Ms Liddell's employer seeking to force her to accept an alteration in her terms and conditions and disciplining her for gross misconduct when she refused to accept it. Secondly, the new national legislation itself permitted Islington <coughs> to take a decision not to designate all of its marriage registrars as civil partnerships registrars. Islington was only required to have sufficient civil partnership registrars to provide the service. A conscientious objection such as that of Ms Liddell could have been accommodated under national law. This is thus not a case in which the national legislature had decided that all marriage registrars should conduct civil partnerships. Third, the national courts found as a fact that accommodating Ms Liddell's conscientious objection would not have caused any detriment to the service received by same-sex couples in Islington. There is no question in this case of the acts of the local authority being necessary to prevent discrimination against same-sex couples. The right to equal treatment of same-sex couples seeking a civil partnership could have been accommodated alongside the right of a long-standing marriage registrar like Ms Liddell uh, during this transitional period of rapid social change. Fourth, Ms. Liddell's religious belief is a mainstream, traditional Christian belief. It is derived from scripture. It is shared 
by most major Christian European denominations, including the Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Churches, and many Protestant churches. Although many people take a different view from Ms. Liddell, her belief is plainly a belief that must be considered worthy of respect in a democratic society. This is an important point because some of the interveners have sought to compare Ms. Liddell's belief with the belief of a person who refuses to conduct a mixed race marriage. But such a belief would not be worthy of respect in a democratic society, unlike the traditional Christian belief of Ms. Liddell that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Fifthly, the effect of Islington's treatment on Ms. Liddell has been to deprive her of her livelihood and to cause her serious distress and financial loss. Sixthly, no proper analysis of Islington's purported justification for its treatment of Ms. Liddell has ever been conducted by the national courts. The aims pursued have been repeatedly reformulated and were put in a different way again by Mr. Eady today. No proportionality analysis has been conducted. There has been no attempt to balance Ms. Liddell's rights, including her right to equal treatment in the manifestation of her religious beliefs against Islington's aims, or to consider what alternatives were open to Islington to avoid the severe adverse consequences uh, suffered by Ms. Liddell. No weight at all has been given by the Court of Appeal to Ms. Liddell's fundamental right undoubtedly engaged by this treatment. On a proper analysis, any of the aims now put forward by the United Kingdom could have been met without requiring Ms. Liddell to be designated as a civil partnerships registrar. Indeed, the achievement of the local authority's asserted aim of demonstrating its commitment to equality of opportunity is in fact defeated by its treatment of Ms. Liddell because what the local authority has done by its doctrinaire approach is to discriminate against Ms. Liddell and subject her to a detriment because of her religious belief, contrary to the values of diversity and equality which Islington purported to be upholding. In these circumstances, the following questions arise under Article 14. First, does Ms. Liddell's claim fall within the ambit of Article 9 so that Article 14 is engaged? Secondly, was she treated to her detriment in the same way as those who did not have a religious conscientious objection to the, the performance of civil partnerships, even though her circumstances were materially different from those of such employees? And thirdly, has her treatment been shown to be justified as a proportionate means of meeting a legitimate aim? We submit that there is no doubt that Ms. Liddell's case engages uh, Article 9 and falls within its ambit. Although she does not need to go so far because this is an Article 14 case, on the facts of this case, her refusal to conduct or register civil partnerships was indeed the manifestation of a religious belief, just as this court has held that a refusal to undertake military service on the part of a Jehovah's Witness is the manifestation of a religious belief. Contrary to the submissions of the United Kingdom, there is no need for Ms. Liddell to show a prima facie breach of Article 9 in order for Article 14 to be engaged. The United Kingdom's submissions on this point are contrary to the established case law of this court, going back at least 30 years to the case of Abdulaziz and the United Kingdom. We note that Mr. Eady has not sought today to grapple at all uh, with this point. There is also no doubt that Ms. Liddell was treated by Islington in the same way as other employees who had no conscientious objection, and that she suffered a disadvantage arising from being treated in that way. As this court has recognized in the case of Thliminos and Greece, treating a person in the same way as another whose circumstances are materially different is a form of discrimination which will be contrary to Article 14 unless objectively justified. To put the matter in a different way, the apparently neutral requirement applied by Islington that all of its registrars should be civil partnerships registrars placed Ms. Liddell as a committed Christian <coughs> under a particular disadvantage 
and such treatment is discriminatory and less justified. Finally, no justification for Ms Liddell's treatment has been demonstrated. No clear or coherent legitimate aim <coughs> has been identified. It has not been shown that the treatment of Ms Liddell was proportionate, and in the absence of any proper proportionality analysis conducted by national courts, it is not appropriate for a broad margin of appreciation to be afforded to the United Kingdom. I'm sorry, if you could just give me one moment. <coughs> the aims pursued by Islington have been differently expressed by both Islington and the United Kingdom at different stages in the proceedings. In the tribunal, Islington stated that its aim was to provide an effective civil partnership arrangement service. <coughs> this aim was accepted by the tribunal as legitimate, but the means for achieving it were clearly found to be disproportionate because the aim could have been achieved without designating Ms. Liddell as a civil partnerships registrar. Since then, the government has sought to reformulate that aim. The government initially argued <coughs> in this court that the local authority's aim was to provide equal access to services irrespective of sexual orientation and thereby communicate a clear commitment to non-discrimination. This formulation could not justify the discrimination in this case, since on the fact it could have been met without designating Ms Liddell. The government now restates its legitimate aim as being that its employees should not treat less favourably or withhold services from members of the public <coughs> on grounds of sexual orientation. But this aim also could have been met without designating Ms Liddell. Had she not been designated as a civil partnerships registrar, there would have been no question of her withholding services from members of the public she would not have been employed to perform such services, as indeed she was not when first employed by the Council. So all the aims identified could have been met without designating Ms Liddell. <coughs> Moreover, the national courts have failed to give any weight to the adverse effects of Islington's conduct on Ms Liddell's rights or to seek to balance those effects against the importance of the aims pursued. The Court of Appeal gave no consideration <coughs> to the fact that the means adopted by Islington were contrary to its own policy, its equal opportunities policy, which expressly included a prohibition on religious discrimination and afforded it equal weight with discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation. That policy stated Islington would actively remove discriminatory barriers that can prevent people from obtaining employment opportunities to which they are entitled. This is not a case in which a broad margin of appreciation should be afforded. The appropriate role for a margin of appreciation would be in the context of assessing the results of a properly conducted proportionality exercise. Where no such exercise has been conducted by the National Court, it is not appropriate to give the Member State such a margin. Moreover, uh, we adopt the submission of Mr Dingerman's that religious rights are a fundamental part of the Convention. This is a suspect category of discrimination, expressly prohibited under Article 14, uh, closely related to ethnicity, and cannot be justified in the absence of very weighty reasons. The national authorities have failed to appreciate there were two rights to equal treatment engaged in this case, which required balanced consideration. Instead, they have focused only on the rights of same-sex couples, which on the particular facts of this case were not, in fact, in jeopardy. We submit that the celebration, toleration and accommodation of diversity to which importance is rightly attached as being central to the achievement of equality of opportunity has wrongly been disregarded by the local authority, the Court of Appeal and the United Kingdom in this case. Before I end my presentation, there is one important point on which I would like to update the Court. At paragraph 104 of our written observations of January 2012, we noted that the Government of the Netherlands had asked the Council of State to give advice on the very same issue that arises in this application, the question of marriage registrars with a conscientious objection to performing same-sex marriages. 
The Council of State has now issued its advisory opinion. We obtained a translation yesterday and we have copies available uh, for members of the court if you would like them. In summary, the Dutch Council of State has adopted precisely the same analysis that we have adopted uh, in our application. It has found that dismissing an existing marriage registrar with a conscientious objection <coughs> constitutes unjustified indirect discrimination on grounds of religious belief and would be contrary to Article 14, read with Article 9 of the Convention, because it falls within the ambit of Article 9, even though it would not be a breach of Article 9 read alone. The Council of State has rejected precisely the justification advanced by the United Kingdom in this case, and has said that the objections of conscience of registrars who take the traditional view of marriage deserves respect in a tolerant democratic society and must be accommodated where this is reasonably possible without a detrimental effect on the provision of the service. The importance of this principle of reasonable accommodation, which has now been endorsed by the Dutch Council of State, reflects the observation of Justice Sachs in the South African Constitutional Court in the case of Fury. He said, the state should, wherever reasonably possible, seek to avoid putting believers to extremely painful and intensely burdensome choices of either being true to their faith or else respectful of the law. For all of these reasons, we invite the court to find that there has been a violation of Ms Liddell's right to equal treatment under Article 14 of the Convention and to award her the just satisfaction which she seeks. Thank you very much.